Yes. Actually, speaking <laughs> about the makeup, uh, you're ca you get to play uh, Jacobs younger yes. and older. Yeah. How, how is that whole process? I know it sounds like work. It's work. It's a lot of work, mostly for other people, uh, <laughs> for, the, for these artists who do the makeup. Davina Lamont and then Tosh Lees uh, and Jordi Morena. Uh, he's from Brazil. So it's a, there's a Brazilian team and uh, a gentleman from, I think, Stockholm. Uh, and uh, who, cr who who molds them, but it's uh, yeah, Davina Lamont and her department are mm -hmm. these incredible artists who spend upwards of seven hours um, to to make this look. Because even for the younger one, there's a wig uh, because you, going back and forth, the hair had to be gone. So there's a wig for receding, and then a lip and a nose. Mm -hmm. And then once he was he a just more and more time in the chair as you <laughs> aged. Um, but, you know, they're the ones who have to be on their feet. You know, me times all the other cast members, the 300 plus speaking roles in this. Um, and they're, uh, it's just, it's really magnificent to get to watch their, them work. Um, you don't get that opportunity a lot in a, in a filmed experience. Everyone does their own thing, comes together briefly, and then you go away again. Um, so just to get, be able to just to sit and watch is, uh, I feel very lucky that I've got I've gotten to have that experience now, uh, three times with uh, when the character George that I played in Grey's Anatomy got hit by the bus and dragged on his face. Uh, we had this whole, that was my first experience with prosthetics and I loved it. It was a Tom Flouts, uh, who's extremely talented, uh, a Los Angeles based uh, artist and um, he did uh, that. Um, he also worked on like Lord of the Rings and Hellboy. So I got to just nerd out and ask him all these questions. Um, and then so and then with J. Edgar Hoover, hmm. who also aged forty years, not there was less time for J. Edgar, but it still had that age progression. It's just it's not it's I've never been lucky enough to have this experience as an actor. So the challenge you're really creating it with them, uh, with the prosthetic and makeup department, and it it feels kind of like a community uh, creation, which I really like. Because I also really like these people. They're they're incredibly hardworking. They're very funny. They keep their sense of humor, and they're workhorses. And I mean, their hours are. Actors can come and go, but they are there from the start of the day to the end of the day, and then wrapping up, and then all the mishigas they take off your face, they have to throw away and sweep up, and you know. So it's a, uh, yeah. They're just um, and they're really nice people too, which is a real. It's a it's a real joy to be able to be around that because you know as you get older you realize just life is too short you know what I mean <laughs> to be around yeah. people who aren't uh, you know uh, happy yeah. with yeah. himself anyway what? Ha happy with himself exactly <laughs> and and then when you have that kind of trust it's just it makes everything better it not only does it make the day better it goes as simple as making the day better to make your time on the uh, on the project better to to I think it is a better product as well I mean I hate doing I mean, it talked about like a <laughs> sense of like a product, but uh, what you get to make, for lack of a better way to say it, is better, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that. What do you think is the most challenging part of bringing these characters to life because they are based on like real people's lives? The hardest, I think it's just the, the pressure, the weight of, of, of making sure you get it right or get it as close as to write as you can, as you are, you know, uh, as you can. So that's, uh, it just involves a lot of research and um, it all comes through the writing. So it helps that the writing, you, you, you have 10 hours to not only tell Picasso's story, but all these people around him. Uh, and unlike what you would, unlike uh, as great as some of these uh, biopics are, you don't get a whole lot of time with the other people in their life. Mm -hmm. And when you stretch it out to 10 hours though, uh, at least I am the beneficiary of that because uh, uh, you know, I get to spend more time with Max. And the people who don't know Max and know, or know who he was gets, get to spend more time. And because and, he's a fascinating person. So, but I think with when you play someone real there's always that extra weight of you want to do right by them 
whether you know whether or not their ancestors are still with us or not um, y- you know uh, yeah you want to do right by them and um, to be able to I remember when I did a uh, 42 and I went uh, traveled to Portland to interview I interviewed two of the sons of the guy I played and he uh, and uh, one of the sons had uh, had a recording of his father uh, of the guy I was playing uh, like four months before he passed away and it was wow. amazing he was just interviewing his dad because he knew the time was limited so you know some t- when you don't have that uh, luxury with someone like Max uh, to be able to find his letters uh, um, that were translated into English uh, translated into English that he wrote uh, um, especially during his time uh, at the monastery you get the closest thing that's the closest thing you can get to actually his voice. And that's a remarkable uh, connection to have, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and that's something that you, I am very grateful to have. So I don't know. It's just that kind of, you want to do right by them, whether or not they're aware and watching <laughs> or not. You know, it's, uh, and especially when it's uh, someone who's had a harder life and a life with struggles, uh, which is pretty much everybody, but you know, some people less than others. Uh, he, yeah, you wanna, uh, you owe it to that person, I guess. To, to your point, uh, Antonio was saying that uh, the fact that uh, Picasso's originally from the same place as he is in Malaga, yeah. not, not only is he obviously the, the, the focus on the, on, the, on the show, but the fact that they're from the same hometown, it adds a little extra oomph, if you will, yeah. uh, to do right by, by him. Exactly. Um, we just saw episode seven. Yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea of what the timeline we we're at. Okay. Um, we saw uh, Picasso visit Auschwitz, and uh, I was sitting there in a very well air conditioned room, and I thought I, it was sweat, but no, it was actually a tear rolling down my eye. I'm wondering. Did any, you guys shot on location, and it, did any of these places move you guys to that point? I mean, you know, you don't have to put yourself out there. And no, we, I was actually there. I, I was not uh, at, I, obviously not in that scene, uh, but I was uh, there. Uh, I don't know, forgive me, I can't, I don't know, remember where it was in Budapest. But it wasn't the, it wasn't our normal studio where we shot most of it when we weren't on location. And they had the set that either they built for uh, Saul. What movie is that? Saul? My name is Saul. Oh, shoot. Movie or show? It was a movie. Not Better Call Saul. That's <laughs> not it. No, um, it was... Salt, the spy movie? No, it was a Hungarian film. Oh, oh I should... It's the gerbil. He's too old. He's like, <laughs> trying to get him to wake up. Um... They filmed them. Uh, they filmed two things there with I think uh, 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 two films about the Holocaust. So they had the set of Auschwitz there. Mm-hmm. They had uh, so, and they had a bunch of other crumbling sets that were all outside. So mm-hmm. you know, being decayed by weather, and so uh, um, t- yeah, to see that was it was. Uh, I didn't ex- I didn't know that that was there because I had my own scenes to film in another place. So, uh, but we got there early and we had some time. So I was like, let's walk around. And it was actually Alex and I. And it was, uh, uh, to say it was, uh, um, uh, yeah, I don't have the words for that. To say, uh, it, 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 it's like uh, beyond emotional. You know it's fake. You know it's fake. It was, you know what movies it's, well, I did at that time anyway. Knew what movies it was made for, but... Um, uh, the closest thing is, uh, 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 I visited Dachau when I was younger, and um, so much of that was stripped away and not obviously created like this set was for the for a film. But um, it, it's uh, yeah, you 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 breathe differently. Um, there's a feeling of uh, uh, wanting to get out of it there as soon as possible, um, but then there's also that feeling that you know you can. You know you can, and they couldn't, and that's a, um, and, yeah. So regardless if you're talking about something like the Holocaust 
and that genocide or any genocide or any sort of, you know, cramming people into the bunks and, and, and when it becomes, uh, when it's a numbers game with human lives, it's a real, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to fathom. It's, 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 I don't know, it's beyond, it's beyond frightening for me. So, um, yeah, we didn't spend a whole, a great deal of time there. Because also you feel like even though it's a movie set that it is, there is something sacred about the ground. Mm. And I don't know why that is, but it's just a feeling that I had. It's the fact that you empathize, obviously. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So overall, since now the project, the last time we saw you, you were still working on the project. Now it's yeah. been completed. What have you taken away personally from your playing the role, and playing the character? Something that I can easily put into words. I think I'm still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. I just finished uh, ADR on Monday for episode eight, so that was my like my last, the last. Thing I'll do for this project, the last uh, work I'll put into it. Um, and um, when I left Budapest, uh, I got to go to England for four days to see a friend in a play that was there. And uh, uh, um, there is an exhibit, uh, Mogliani. I, I always, always say it wrong. Anyone can help me out? I have, uh, I have problems saying his name also. <laughs> Modigliani. Modigliani. <laughs> Um, so he had a he had a, a exhibit or they had an exhibit of his at the Tate Modern, and he uh, um, one of our writers Raf Green told me about it. And uh, there's a uh, two pictures, two portraits of uh, of Max that he that he uh, that he painted. So to go there, that what I thought was like it was my first kind of goodbye. If that doesn't sound too corny. Probably does, but you know, I'm a little corny. Um, but to be able to sit on one of those benches and to just and to look at, you know, to be that close to somebody who actually painted him, uh, it was a it was a somber goodbye. But you know, um, it's I don't know when you when when I don't know how to put it into words to be honest. And so I'm sorry I don't have a, a better answer. But um, You've, there's, uh, whether or not it's deserved, I can't speak to that either, but there is a, 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 a connection you feel to that person. And um, I don't know if they would be like, I don't want anything to do with you, you know, <laughs> if they were here, but, um, you know, let's hope not, but, um, um, but um, maybe it is just one-sided, but it is, it, it, you can't help uh, form uh, a, a connection. Um, and, and whether that starts out as a, a sympathy or empathy, um, I think it grows into something much more than that, uh, much more personal than that. So maybe that's why it's hard to talk about. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's that, it's that uh, the more months go by, I guess, the, the more calloused you get about it. And, you're, you know, maybe I'll watch it sometime, you know. 10, 20 years or something if I'm still kicking and still can put big glasses on and watch the television. But I, I don't want to watch it now. It's not, it's not something that I can do besides uh, ADR. That's because they get mad if you don't do ADR. So you have to do ADR. And uh, so I do that and then um, that's all I can do. There's this really great line in this episode. Uh, Picasso says, uh, art is the lie that tells the truth. Yeah. Perhaps because, like you said, you're about to wrap episode 8 ADR and it's too fresh. You probably wouldn't feel comfortable watching it. But, I mean, Nat Geo doesn't put out crap, right? No. So <laughs> no. No. The first two episodes were wonderful. <laughs> then I, wa I wasn't in them. So I watched the first two and then last, last two, which is a nice uh, bookend. Because right, right, I wasn't, right. those are not the ones I was in. What I wanted to ask you is, uh, do, you, do you think this is, uh, I guess there's really no way of knowing unless we were there, but how accurate of a portrayal do you think this overall 10 episode arc is to the, to the story? Um, and would you feel comfortable if somebody living under a rock had no idea 
who this gentleman was showing him this this work, even though you can't personally watch it yourself right now. Are you talking? Uh, are you talking about Max specifically? Or? It, well, the whole ten episodes, Whoa. including your eight, that you're not willing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my own neuroses and my own kind of feeling that. I don't know if it's it's a combination of growing up doing theater and having that be still the majority of the work I've done. You don't watch yourself. It, it, that's impossible to do. So it's not something that's ever uh, been comfortable for me to do. Uh, I, I did watch when I first started Grays. I watched for a while just tech for technical kind of reasons. But then you start looking like, oh, when I hold my face this way, then I have this weird chin thing that's happening. And you don't want to act like this every time. You know, you don't want to, you don't want that to come into play. So uh, it's partially that, it's partially the theater thing. And I think it's partially what you do in the, in that moment of when you create that, uh, that world, it's just not, you're in it. You don't, you're not a, a, a witness to it. So uh, there's such a, a, um, a discrepancy for me uh, for the uh, trying to have meet those have those two worlds meet. Mm -hmm. But yes, I would. Uh, I'm glad people are watching it. I'm, I mean, I'm glad they don't have my neuroses about it. <laughs> um, I think I, I love working. Uh, I loved working with these people. Um, I think that kind of. Um, uh, uh, wanting to excel, wanting to get it right, that was something that was uh, permeated uh, throughout the entire set. It's very hard to get everyone on the same page, at least in my experience, always. You want to get as many people as you can on the same page, but these two experiences, in my experience with them, have uh, been the closest to that, that I've, you know, where you feel like everyone just wants to, um, wants to, doesn't want to cut corners, doesn't want to, uh, 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 phone it in in any way uh, wants to go the extra mile uh, for um, be, uh, and and I think that's just the kind of personalities that uh, Ken Biller has kind of assembled. I think uh, uh, I credit uh, he, he's the one who really you know helps uh, put everyone together. And he, you know, with with Matthias, the DP, and his uh, uh, wife Catherine, with Ryan, his uh, A camera, you know, and their whole department. Then you have Davina Lamont and her whole department. You have Sonu and the costume and all her department. And it's it's something that they all share. And they are the and their excitement bleeds into the actors and bleeds into the rest of the crew. And I feel like. Uh, so there, so going back, roundabout <laughs> answer to, uh, yes, if someone, uh, yes, I would, um, I'm very happy to be a part of it, um, and proud to be a part of it, um, but, you know, still my neuroses is big, uh, Can I just my, say, I feel oh, like sorry. you're, sorry, Angel, I feel like you're being hard on yourself, I, I loved you on the show, and Thank I loved you. you in Grey's Anatomy. Thank you. I, 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 I am hard on myself, and I'm, yeah. I think we're our I worst just, uh, critics, right? Yes, I think, and I think maybe that's good, maybe it's bad, but it is what it is, and I've gotten to a point in my life where I've just realized that that's just going to be a part of it, and I, I've tried to, you know, trying to run from it doesn't get, hasn't gotten me anywhere, so, <laughs> you know, embracing it is just like, you know, you know, and then my husband knows what to not say and what to avoid and what to, you know what I mean? Are you ready to He's like, I'm not going to say this, I think. <laughs> Max Jacobs was so ahead of his time for the period, and it, and we talked about how torturous that was for him. Yes. And and since you had to play him, it's uh, did you feel that, but from the beginning to where he was living in the mon monastery, did he find some calm? Uh, did you I don't. That? Um, I think that scene. I think what's fascinating about that scene to me, the scene I had with Antonio. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Max is lying a little bit in that scene. Yeah. Um, from his letters, and it is one thing. It's like you, you'd wish there's just a little more, but you know, it's yeah, you can't. Then you, you're going to be greedy. Mm. I don't want to be greedy, but um, um, I do think he's lying when he said I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. from his letters, he's not. He's not, and mm -hmm. I think. But you know, it's that thing that close friends do. You know, mm -hmm. it's a version of I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a version of I don't want to talk about it, 
um, it, it, uh, and I think that um, no, he from his letters it was clear he was not he didn't feel that way. Uh, he, f I mean, those quotes that still kind of ring in my head, and I'm going to par paraphrase them because again, the old gerbil. But um, this idea that uh, you know I'm not deserving of any great happiness because I've filched so many moments of lesser happiness throughout my life or I've looked at myself from every angle and all I see is weakness and foolishness and sin. And, um, you know, that's not, that's not someone who's at peace mm. with, uh, with, with himself. Mm. And uh, what I thought was interesting about that writing was, oh, this is, it's interesting to see these two old friends and they are still friends, but there is still, there is, there, there is still a lot of, and there were things later on in the scene too. Of uh, when Max uh, mentions, you know, Art and Picasso, that you cannot separate the two. I mean, that's very loaded as well. Mm -hmm. That's um, um, their relationship, uh, their love is is very complicated, and uh, and and um, as just as friends, as as uh, artists, and you know. Obviously, Picasso had so much more, vastly more success, yes. and was set up to have yeah. more success. Yeah. Never mind talent. I'm not talking about yeah. that because that is subjective. Yeah. But with who who Picasso was, yes. being a straight man, he was set up very differently than yeah. Max was. Yeah. So, um, but this is one of the one of the joys about uh, you know Nat Geo uh, choosing to make. Uh, ten episodes out of something, uh, out of a life, so you get all those other lives as well, and 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 now maybe pe it will spur people to look up and research, you know, Max, because I know he's well, very well known in France, but I did, I was not aware of him being an American. That beautiful nuance, yeah. Huh? Beautiful nuance in this life, the yeah. possible life. Yes. So Hoover, we yes. got Max now. Yes. Next. <laughs> I have no idea. People. I just went on audition today, so uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm talking it's, about genius. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I'm just <laughs> ignoring you. No, um, um, I'm not in charge of casting myself, so mm -hmm. it's an awkward situation. I have a funny answer, and this is all I can say. I think everybody who's ever done uh, a genius the last two seasons should audition for the monster and send in our tapes for the monster. Because not, I don't even know if that's gonna be a character. But I think Frankenstein's monster, to see everybody do their take on it, I would think that's a great thing for the DVDs. See Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, yeah. Just mm -hmm. all improvised monsters. Your inner Tracy Boris Chimo. Carla. What? Your inner Boris Carla. Exactly. <laughs> and and you, there's no lines to it, so you have to make up your own lines <laughs> too. So I just think it would be, Nuts. Can we get a grunt? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta work on it. I gotta prepare. I gotta research it. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Guys, you got time for about three more questions? Okay. So um, this. Oh, was there's a, Jeffrey. Yeah. This was very much of a real person that you're portraying, and Max had, like every real person, is changes in personality throughout the time, and you portray every single one of them. Was it ever difficult for you to make it all fluid in his lifetime? Um. Fluid meaning sort of it, it, that it was all one person. Yes. I think I think that was part of the joy about it because you had him finding, um, uh, you had him uh, find trying to find solace in 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 alcohol, in opium, and in trying to um, in humor, uh, uh, in and. What I love about the script and what I feel they consistently got right with Max was, if I can be so, uh, if that doesn't sound too arrogant to say, is that uh, it, he, you saw someone who was all over the place, you know, you s and their commitment not to be afraid to paint him in not the most flattering light. Uh, you know, he was someone who could be extremely cutting and rude and then wonderfully generous in the life of the party. I don't know which episode it's in. Maybe it's in the next one, but he, you know, collects money for a sick friend, you know, but he is also, you know, but uh, there's a volatility, there's a, a dissatisfaction, an unhappiness, uh, a happiness. I mean, there is so much to, to Max that I feel like 
it was joyful to be able to play him and I did feel it was all one person because we all have that in our lives and I think a lot of times if there is a fault with the script uh, or with the character it's making them too uh, uh, one-dimensional or two-dimensional and you don't you know no one is all good no one is all bad no one is you know uh, 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 all moral or immoral uh, um, um, it's even though in politics some people might seem to be <laughs> all bad you know uh, that that's just not human nature and so what I like uh, what I'm grateful for with this script uh, with genius is that none of that was shot they didn't shy away from any of that and and that it's it's it makes all the difference in the world uh, as an act for an actor so what part of what aspect of Max did you enjoy the most oh all of them I think the heart the heart uh, you know there are certain parts that were harder to, harder, more challenging, um, and just left you with an awful feeling. Like there's a scene, I don't know if it's in seven or eight, of a party where he insults Ava, this beautiful actress. I mean, just, she's beautiful too, on the outside, but just inside too. Her name's Eileen O'Quinn. Not Irish. No, she's Irish. <laughs> um, and she, and she, uh, but she plays a, 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 a French person. And, uh, but uh, Max is, awful to her yeah. and uh, he gets uh, kicked out of uh, Picasso eventually removes him from the party and there are certain scenes that you leave and you're just like you know you don't feel good <laughs> but I don't think you're supposed to feel feel good mm -hmm. it's not like yeah <laughs> you know what I mean you don't feel that way you just feel like you feel like you've just been <laughs> kicked out of a party and maybe uh, maybe destroyed a friendship and you know, maybe he's not even in in a hundred percent control of what he's doing. It's the you know, it's the darker side of him that's coming out because of uh, because of the alcohol or whatever drug he's using at that moment. But that there, it was alcohol. So, um, yeah. So again, it's like some scenes just you know, you hope you got it right, but you have to just walk away because you know you're not gonna you're not gonna feel good. And you hopefully you get a good night's sleep, and you can wake up, and you know you can escape it. You know you're not caught in that, and that's where you go. Thanks for reality. <laughs> I think you're rapping. This yeah, we're oh, yeah. rapping. But we saw you get baptized. Can you tell us what you felt after that scene? That was uh, <laughs> that was intense. It was intense because I think Max believes he, he believes he saw Jesus, mm. and that kind of I, he's. You have someone who is searching so desperately, so desperately, and there is a fanaticism to that that is, that is frightening uh, um, when someone is seeing visions at a very certain specific time in their life uh, at the same age that Jesus was when he was uh, supposed, you know, when they say he was crucified and all that. So it's like, uh, I think he, uh, he's wanting... I mean, look at the religion he chooses. It's not the most forgiving, <laughs> you know, religion, especially as a gay man. I mean, why, why, mm. why would he? Uh, why does he walk into that willingly? That's a fast. It was a fascinating, uh, fascinating uh, aspect of his personality to explore. But it feels very. Which we have more time. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was son of Saul. Son of Saul. Thank you hey. so much. Hey.